How's it going people? Welcome back to The Pointless Polo Project. You join me in my house wearing my sunglasses because summer has decided to arrive in February, which I am super gassed about. But that's not the important point of this video. What I'm going to be doing today is painting my wing mirror caps blue, so to match the rest of my car's colour. At the end of January, someone slammed their van into my right wing mirror, so I had to buy a replacement one, which has been sitting in my room now for sort of two or three weeks, as I've just mulled over the idea of painting the wing mirrors. I'm going to try and paint the wing mirrors, the rubbing strips, the door handles, as much stuff as possible on the car. But for this this video I'm just going to do the wing mirrors and, and kind of show you how they're done. So that'll be both painting them as well as replacing an entire wing mirror so you'll get to kind of see two aspects of a job uh, because if you're normally painting your wing mirrors you won't have to take the entire wing mirror off just the cap but obviously in my case I have to actually change an entire wing mirror so you get to see that part too so two birds one stone with this video. As always remember to like, comment and subscribe for more wiki car content but without further ado let's get into the video. <laughs> So let's start this video off then by talking to you the things that you'll need for this job. One is of course going to be the colour of your car as an aerosol, one is clear lacquer and one is a plastic primer because obviously your wing mirrors are plastic. You'll also need some sandpaper, now I went to Halfords to buy this as well as the, the primer and the lacquer. So these are, there's a, a big assortment in this pack, there's sort of four 1200 grits for 800 grits, for 400 grits, and three 240 grits. Now, if you don't know what grit is, it's basically how coarse the sandpaper is. So the lower the number, the more coarse it is, and the higher the number, the more fine it is. Normally, the more coarse ones are for prepping, and the more fine ones are for sort of later down the line when it comes to the primer and the lacquer and the, the color stages, basically. You'll also need one of these, so a flathead screwdriver. There is actually a tool that you can be used, so it's not focusing, but you'll need a flathead screwdriver driver uh, I've got this in just in case that goes wrong uh, and also just here I have taken a part of a different video which is also plastic and I've painted it with the car color so that I can compare the two what I'll do is I'll show you where you can find in the car your car's color code which is really important for getting something like this but in terms of getting the color code for your paint you need to go into the back of your car into the boot if you've got a polo like myself and lift up the under tray of the boot and then on this sorry that's just hit the mic but on this you can see just there it says la5f so that's the color code for my car um, and you should be able to find your color code in pretty much the same way and so from that I went to a store that could mix me up some paint and I'm now going to compare the paint that I've already sprayed onto this piece to the car. So as you can probably just about tell, that looks all right, doesn't it? It kind of looks like it's the same color as the body. Yeah, I'd say that's, uh, that looks pretty good to me. Now the next key step is actually removing the wing mirror caps from the wing mirrors. I've already done this one uh, because it took me about sort of 20 minutes to actually work out exactly how to do it. So I was just sort of levering it with this, uh, with the flathead screwdriver. To just give you a bit of an idea, let me move you a little bit closer. What I basically did was I came in behind here, sort of brought the um, thing around until I found this point here, and then did a little bit of levering until it kind of popped up. So you can see that obviously it pops up here as so underneath here in fact you can probably just about see it uh here so along here there's these sort of little tabs um i got the old uh, flathead in here and just again one little push here uh, and then it kind of pops off over the top so that's uh, one wing mirror cap off and after much persuasion there is the second one so to get these off it is actually quite a bit of a faff if you haven't got the correct tool i was using this flathead screwdriver which probably isn't the best tool it'd be better if you had something plastic actually to be used to take those off so now you join me sunglasses less in my workshop with the two wing mirror caps so what we're going to do with these first and foremost is clean them basically you just want to go over them make sure that there's nothing sort of there's no dirt there's no dust that kind of stuff that could impact the job cool so given those sort of five minutes to dry they're looking obviously probably as fresh as they've looked since they left the factory and what I'm going to do now is begin the sanding process. So the reason why we sand things before we paint them is simply so that the paint sticks better. I'm obviously primering mine before I start painting, so I am now sanding for the sake of putting the primer on. I'm gonna sand all of the areas that I can basically reach um, with my sandpaper, and then from that point we will um, have a look at how it's going. I'm gonna use my 400 grit, I think, for this one. I could go for the 240, but I'm gonna start with a 400 and see how abrasive that is, and then if the 240 is better, I'll switch onto that. So let's do that now.
Right, so they have now been sanded. If you pick them up and you kind of run your finger across them, they should feel very smooth and uh, you should theoretically be able to take a little bit of the plastic off as well. Um, that's just exactly kind of how you want it to be painted on. You want it to have sort of no bumps, no lumps, etc. What I am going to do now is uh, quickly go over this again with a cloth just to make sure that this stuff that I can take off with my fingers isn't going to be painted on because obviously if you paint onto stuff that can come off then the paint's gonna come off. It's pretty simple. And there we go. So I've wiped both those off. If I now use a clean finger and I rub along the face of it I shouldn't be able to take anything off which I can't which is perfect. Also you can see maybe just about there's a few scratches still in it um they look like they should be affecting the paint but they feel very smooth when i put my finger over it and that's exactly kind of how you want it to feel before you start the painting process so now we're going to spray our first primer layer onto the wing mirror caps to do this you want to stand sort of about 30 centimeters away 25 to 30 centimeters and go for just a light coating so we'll start with this one uh, make sure this is well mixed first of all by the way you can do that by sort of shaving it for a minute or so before it comes to actually spraying which i've already done right so that looks like our first layer is basically done Perfect, so now we've gone over both of those in our first layer of primer. Gonna leave them for 15 minutes and I'm gonna do a second layer of primer just to make sure that they are as well primed as possible for the paint to go on. Right, so I've left those to dry for a little while and I've come back to them to have a look. I've actually also used these ingenious ooh, Versace Blue Jeans cans as ways to paint them better next time. Right, so here you can see my two primer dump mirror caps. They're looking pretty solid. Currently can't see any black through the primer, which is exactly what I was looking for. Same on the back side, nothing really to show you. It does kind of show up the cracks. You can see there's a crack here in this one, uh, and there's a few cracks at the bottom of that one over there, but nothing really to worry about. So the next step for me then is to give it a couple of hours and then I'll come back over to it and look to see if I can prepare it for painting. Right, it's almost eight hours later. I didn't really need to wait that long, but the Halfords primer says wait 24 hours and online it says wait 45 minutes. I decided to wait eight hours or so because it just gave me some time to do some other stuff, work on the car in other ways uh, and make sure that the primer was nice and dry. And it is very much dry. So it's dried pretty much all the way around, which is perfect. I left the heater on in here to make sure that it stayed warm so that I can chill in here in my t-shirt. Uh, and also to make sure that this never at any point when it got darker uh, got too cold to dry so it is literally dry to the touch in, in every possible way um, the one thing that you will notice about it if you get to this stage is that it's actually quite um, abrasive there's there's clearly some some faults to the paint uh, and what we do now is we get an even finer sandpaper than we did before and sand back over it once again to get it prepared for our layers of paint. Right, so I'm gonna go for 1,200 and that's super, super fine. It shouldn't really do too much, but it will make sure that this is all nice and smooth and ready for me to begin painting. So I'm just gonna go over that now. Okay, so those have been sanded down and now they are super, super smooth. I also obviously clean them off with a cloth. It's actually quite satisfying how smooth they actually are to touch now. Um, but obviously now the next step is going to be to ruin that smoothness by throwing on some of our body colour. So let's get into that. As an FYI, of course, when it comes to painting with this, again, you want to be sort of around 20 centimetres away. You want to give this a good long shake. I'm talking like quite a few minutes so that it is really, really uh, prepared and mixed up so that you're not going to get any sort of splurges or that kind of stuff and that the paint's fully mixed, basically. Uh, on top of that, you want to make sure that the room is warm, at least room temperature. It can get quite cold in here, hence I've got a heater down here that's making sure that it's going to be nice and warm and to make sure that I can warm this up as well to make sure that it's exactly the right kind of temperature for spraying. Um, so that's just a quick thing pre-prep. Now I'm gonna put these back onto their little Versace blue jeans um, holders and get on with the spraying. Remembering again, super light first coat and we're gonna leave that to dry for sort of five minutes. Cool. 
Cool, so that's the first coat of paint. What I'm going to do now is leave that to dry for five minutes so that I can sort of mitigate any running when it comes to the second coat. And then I'm gonna just spray it over again, get a nice second coat. Might do sort of two or three coats in this basically. Cool, so I'm really glad that my dad got home because he told me that this paint is actually two-pack paint, which means that it's actually got the lacquer mixed into it beforehand. So we now no longer need this eight quid Halfords lacquer that I have. But if you had a normal single pack aerosol where it's just spraying the paint, you would then need to afterwards go back over and lacquer it. So I've got three layers on, as you can see behind me, in fact, let's just move this over here. My uh, dad came up with this ingenious thing. He must be far more intelligent than I am, but he uh, basically hung them from the ceiling um, to help with kind of the drying process as well as being able to reach all the different parts of it. So you can kind of see if I zoom in on one, that the shine of a lacquer is already kind of on it. You can see the shine also quite well on this one, like it's quite shiny, you can see a bit of a reflection in it. So yes, obviously these are uh, not in need of lacquer in this case, or at least according to my dad, and I'm going to trust him considering he's a 25, 30 year car mechanic who has done painting before. So we're going to leave these now for an hour, I'll come back to them before I go to bed, just to have a look, they should be kind of dry by then, and then we'll leave them in there overnight, nice and warm, so that I can put them back onto the car tomorrow. Right, so here they are, finished, ready, and prepared to go onto the car, and also dry being the main point. If I touch them, they don't have any sort of marks left. So the first step is gonna be obviously to put the one onto this that is going to go onto the car shortly. And then the second point is going to be to put the one back on the car. And then the third point will be putting that all back into the car, which is a slightly longer process, but I'm gonna try and get it done within the next half an hour or so. So let's go do that. So in terms of putting this first one on, you can see here it is. Uh, I'm just literally going to first and foremost clip it back on over the top like so, and hope that nothing kind of goes wrong. In fact, we need to make sure we move the glass. Shit. <clears throat> okay, so in terms of clipping it back on, the first step is going to be to ensure that the, um, oh, hello, just got a few markings on it. That's nothing, it's just dust. Um, <clears throat> So the first step then for putting this back on is simply gonna be sliding it back over the top as we had done before, making sure that the glass is straight because it makes life a little bit easier when it comes to actually clipping it back on. Um, let's try and get it in the right position. There we go, over it comes. Now we wanna make sure that we slot that bottom bit in where it should be, which is just slightly to the left of where I currently got it, and get that bit over there. Then once that's all in place, should click in as so, beautiful. Oh, I'm so gassed about that, perfect. Cool, so it's same again on this side. Literally just push it over the top. In fact, first and foremost, make sure the glass is straight so it fits over. Oh, beautiful, there we go. Just make sure it's in the right position because I didn't have it in the right position first time around. Uh, but that fit in perfectly. Look at that, oh, I'm so happy with that. So in the knowledge that we still need to do the other side, you can kind of give a little bit of an understanding of what it's gonna look like on the car. Look at that, it's really good. I really like how the paint matches. I was worried that it wasn't gonna match, but that is actually really, really good. Um, just bring it back out. Oh, very, very happy with that. So whenever you wanna take off the wing mirror fully, you have to actually take off the door card because there's actually a, an electric bit that links the uh, glass heater to the car, obviously. So what you wanna do first is turn this to a down position, push that up like so, so this has gotta be down, that's gotta be up. It's a little bit different, obviously, if you've got um, an electric uh, window set, but luckily I don't. So then you want to remove the handle, which is a simple kind of pull away. You can see all of these little bits here are kind of dead straight, so you wanna pull it in kind of this direction. At first I was pulling it kind of this direction, that's not the direction you want to pull it, you want to pull it basically this way uh, so that it pops out. And at that point it exposes these two Torx key 30 bolts which I'm going to undo now. Now you can see that the top one is much shorter than the bottom one. So just something to be aware of. I'm gonna put them in a safe place for now. So as you can see under here, there are a few more Torx 20 bolts. So you've got one there, one here, one there, and then one there. So I'm going to unscrew those and then we should be able to pop the door panel off. Mm -hmm. 
So having completed that, you now need to basically loosen this from the bottom of the car. There's a few clips underneath that you need to kind of break away from. Cool, so once you've uh, kind of gone through the clips, there's three clips on each side. There's one, two, three, and there's one, two, three. They're very, they can break very easily, as I have just found out. Um, but once you've done that, you kind of want to just sort of rest the door card down. And then once that's down, you should be able to see just here, this is coming directly from the wing mirror. So this is where we're going to have to plug in our new wing mirror is what I'm trying to say. So next up, we're going to remove this plastic here, which uh, should just be a screwdriver or whatever in there. And then a little wiggle round. Ooh, and off it comes. So you've got two plugs there. They should just be plugged in and it, it comes off nice and easy. That's probably the easiest bit so far, not gonna lie. So now that you've done that, you need to take out the heating sort of electrical bit for the wing mirror. Uh, it's a simple clip, like it really isn't very difficult. And once that's out, you've got another clip in there that you just need to kind of pull free. Next up is going to be to remove the two, the two Torx 30 screws we've got in here. So we've got one up in there and one in there. And I was sketchy bit about this, why I brought you up so close is that they can actually fall down into the door card, which is absolutely not ideal. So what I'm gonna do first and foremost is get something to put here to kind of mitigate that from happening too badly. So just something plastic or whatever that will hold the bolts in case they happen to fall. Like, they don't make that easy. They make it very easy for it to fall down into the car, but not easy for it to actually come out nice and simple. So let's keep that in there to make sure nothing falls. As it comes out, I'm kind of scooping the bolt. So uh, when it reaches like its max, I then kind of do a little bit of a down. Whoop. Yeah, it's like a little surgical uh, maneuver, but whatever, you probably can't hear me over the sound of that plane, but whatever. Cool, so now this is basically off the car, so we can uh, pull that through nice and simple and uh, just basically then pull the electrical wires back through the hole. And we're on to putting on our set, our, onto our new one, basically. So same again, this goes through there. That literally just slides on there, super easy, like nothing to worry about with that at all. It's literally just a simple slide and pop in. Come back around this side, now you've got this instead. So you want to kind of just fit these back into the places that they were beforehand. So that one was in there, that one was in there. Obviously make sure that this gets plugged back in and it's that way around. These uh, might need new sellotape on them, so I'll do that in a sec. And now we're on to putting in those bolts again. So we need our T30 back and the two bolts that we removed beforehand. And then it's about putting the door card back on. So, uh, in fact, no it's not. I just realized I haven't done this first. Do this bit first. I, this is one thing that is very easy to forget, um, but this should be on before you do that bit. just clips back on as so, nice and easy. Make sure that's on first, because otherwise you, it will annoy you. Okay, so when it comes to putting the door card back on, one thing that knows you story will tell you is how difficult it is to get this top bit in. You need to really focus. I, I tried to get this side in first and then this side in second. So once this side is in, it's got like a little latch you need to put over the top. Once that bit's in, from that point on, it's not the most difficult job in the world. But until that point, I found it quite difficult. As another quick point as well, when you're taking out the T20, bolts from the bottom, these can fall out, which are the sockets for them. Just push them back into the car. It's quite simple to see where they go. Then yeah, we're doing up the uh, Torx 20 bolts again, just to kind of get the uh, door card back in place properly. And make sure it's not gonna go anywhere.
Right, so now we're doing these bolts back up. Remembering it's the short one for the top. And the long one for the bottom. And then the cover goes back on. Should hopefully be easier than it was to take it off. Beautiful, look at that, nice and easy. And then on goes this again. Down it goes. The window winds. And now we can finally have a look at this car with the wing mirrors on. Finally, the job is done. Everything is sorted, the wing mirrors are on the car, and I'm just generally happy. It took way too long because I didn't actually follow the instructions of the paint and that kind of stuff. I should have just done it properly, um, and I faffed around a little bit, so apologies in advance for that. But it's a learning experience for me, as much as hopefully you guys learn something from this as well, or even if you just learn that I'm a, a, an idiot when it comes to painting wing mirrors, um, I don't mind. I think it's it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. I'm glad to have two working wing mirrors in my car. Please, for the love of everything, Thing. can people stop smashing my wing mirrors it's an actual joke how often this happens to me but yes topic of the week this week is if you could have your car in any color what color would it be simple as that i like mine being in blue i might get it wrapped one day but who knows i mean having just painted those wing mirrors i probably won't just because i'm gassed to have done it and happy that it's finally over as always remember to like comment subscribe all that great stuff and thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next one Listen.